let's talk about gas laws now. So the gas laws in general relate pressure, volume, temperature, and the number of moles. So you can draw up this little square to tell how they're all related. The key to filling it out is just remembering the relationship between pressure and volume. So if you have a balloon and you're trying to decrease its volume by squishing on it, uh, you're going to increase the pressure. So pressure and volume are inversely proportional. As you increase one, you have to decrease the other. So if I'm increasing pressure, I have to decrease volume, or if I want to increase volume, I have to decrease pressure. So because they're inversely proportional, I'm going to put them on opposite sides. And then it doesn't really matter where I put moles in temperature. It doesn't really matter, so long as they're on the other sides. The full lines connecting these on the outline, on the edges, are direct relationships, whereas the dotted lines are inverse uh, relationships. So temperature is inversely proportional to moles, and volume and temperature are directly proportional. So we'll get into that in a second. So the first law you need to know about is Boyle's law. So Boyle's law. Uh, is about pressure and volume, and it says that pressure is inversely proportional to volume, which we have over here in our little square. So let's do a practice question. The gas in a balloon has a pressure of one atmosphere at 30 liters. When squeezed to 20 liters, what is the pressure? So P1V1 equals P2V2 is our equation. We just plug it in, and after we do the work, we get 1.5 atmospheres of pressure. We'll get into the units of pressure later, just know that right now, atmospheres is one of the ways that you can denote pressure. Let's talk about Charles' law now. So Charles' law says that volume and temperature are directly proportional. So as you increase the temperature, you're going to increase the volume. Imagine this as a balloon, and as you're heating up the balloon, so say for example if you leave it outside in the sun, it'll actually expand. Sometimes people leave their balloons out in the sun for too long, and sometimes they'll pop. So, V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. Note that in this case, temperature has to be measured in Kelvin, and you can always convert from degrees Celsius and Kelvin by using this equation right here. So Kelvin is equal to the temperature that you have in degrees Celsius plus 273. So balloon is filled with methane, CH4, and it has a volume of 100 milliliters at 25 degrees Celsius. We need to determine the volume of the balloon at zero degrees Celsius. So if you list out everything we have, we have V1 is equal to 100 milliliters. T1 is not equal to 25, but it's equal to 25 plus 273, remember, because we need it in kelvins. So it's 298 kelvins. V2 is what we're trying to find, and T2 is 0 plus 273 to give us 273 kelvins. So V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, and when we do the math, we end up with just this rearrangement, and it gives us 93.2 milliliters as our final volume. Remember, volume and temperature are directly proportional, so if we're going to decrease the, uh, the temperature, as we're doing in this case, going from 25 degrees to 0 degrees, we should also decrease the volume. So we're going from 100 milliliters to 93.2, so our answer makes sense. So the last law that you guys have to know is Gay-Lussac's law, and it says that pressure and temperature are directly proportional. So we can write it as P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So let's do an example. So we have a basketball, and it's left outside on a hot day. The pressure in the ball is 180 kilopascals. We'll get to the units later. Just know it's a unit of pressure. So it's 180 kilopascals when it's 15 degrees Celsius. On this particular day, it's 28 degrees Celsius, and we need to know the pressure of the gas inside the ball. So we have P1 as 180 kilopascals. T1, again, remember it has to be in Kelvin, as 285 Kelvin. P2 we're trying to find out, and T2 is 301 Kelvin. So, P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. When we work it out, we get P2 equals 188 kilopascals. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, there are many ways to measure pressure. So one of them is kilopascals, another is tor, and the third is atmospheres, ATM. So they're all related, and they're all different ways of saying the same thing. So for example, you can take somebody's height and say they're 100 centimeters, or you can take somebody's height and say they're whatever they are in feet and inches. It's the same thing, it doesn't change the person's height, it's just different ways of representing the same thing. So you can convert between the three by knowing that 101.3 kilopascals is equal to 760 torr, which is equal to one atmosphere of pressure. So let's do a quick example. So if you have 89.5 kilopascals of pressure and you want to convert that into say torr, you just need a conversion factor. So if kilopascals is the unit you're trying to get rid of, we should put in the denominator, and you're trying to introduce tor, so put it in the numerator. 
So we're going to multiply by tor over kilopascals. This number is essentially 1, because remember, 760 tor is equal to 101.3 kilopascals from this. So when we multiply by 1, we're not changing the value of the number, we're just changing the units. So that causes the kilopascals to cross out, and we get 671 tor as our answer. Two things to keep in mind, a lot of these gas questions will be stated in STP or SATP. So STP just stands for te standard temperature and pressure, which means you're working with 0 degrees Celsius and 101.3 kilopascals of pressure. SATP means standard ambient temperature and pressure, so it's what's around us right now. So room temperature is typically 25 degrees Celsius, and a comfortable pressure for us to live in is 100 kilopascals.